Breaking news. Ukrainian politician Volodymyr Zelensky stole the show at the Group of Seven summit. However, China was still the main focus of the summit. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky made an unexpected visit to the G7 summit in Japan on Saturday, warning that Russia has tramped on everything that is civilized, and calling for more assistance from beyond Europe while dressed in protocol shredding green tactical military slacks and a hoodie. The Ukrainian call for unity, he said, could be heard around the world from Hiroshima. Zelensky criticized the so called neutral countries of India and Brazil. Accusing them of falling for Kremlin propaganda, and restated his demands for access to U.S. fighter jets, which President Biden agreed to allow European allies to supply to Kyiv on Friday. New sanctions were announced by G7 leaders on Russia on Friday, targeting the export of industrial machinery, tools, and other technology that could aid Moscow's war effort, and redoubling efforts to reduce Russia's revenues from trade in metals and diamonds. The G7 leaders assured Ukraine that our support for Ukraine will not waver in a joint statement. Most of the action, however, in Hiroshima had less to do with Vladimir Putin's preferred war than with events 3,600 miles to the east in Beijing. For British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, China is the greatest challenge of our age to world peace and prosperity, and President Xi Jinping's regime is increasingly authoritarian at home and abroad. As two separate statements show, the leaders of the world's wealthiest democracies are gravely concerned about Beijing's incursions into the Indo Pacific and have reaffirmed their support for Taiwan, the self ruling island that China considers its sovereign territory. To counterbalance China's growing regional influence, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will sign a new security pact with Papua New Guinea on Monday in Port Moresby. Meanwhile, leaders from India, South Korea, Australia, and the Cook Islands joined Zelensky and the G7's regular members in Hiroshima to pay their respects at the city's peace memorial and bolster the group's credibility in the Indo Pacific region. Concerning alleged human rights abuses in Tibet and Xinjiang, the far western regions of China, the G7 issued a statement urging Beijing not to conduct interference activities. The G7's main focus was on lessening supply chain reliance on China and fighting Beijing's economic coercion, citing a disturbing rise in the weaponization of economic vulnerabilities. China has not been bashful about using trade as a weapon in recent years, whether it be to punish South Korea for hosting a U.S. missile system, Australia for calling for an independent probe into the pandemic's origins, or Lithuania for allowing Taiwan to establish a de facto embassy. The group issued a statement saying that the pressure was an attempt to undermine the foreign and domestic policies and positions of G7 members as well as partners around the world. The Foreign Ministry of Beijing responded by voicing strong dissatisfaction with the G7 statements. A foreign ministry spokesman said the G7 insisted on manipulating China related issues, smearing, and attacking China. Furthermore, China called Japan's ambassador to Beijing for a reprimand. Professor Wang Yiwei, director of Beijing's Renmin University's Institute of International Affairs, told Time that Washington has transformed the G7 from an economic to a ideological grouping hellbent on preventing China from catching up with the U.S. in the global value chain. U.S. Vice President Joe Biden said at a press conference on Sunday that the goal of the G7 is not to decouple from China but rather to de risk and diversify our relationship. When it comes to competition, the world's two largest economies' tech industries are ground zero. Already, the White House has blacklisted dozens of Chinese technology companies, restricting the country's access to sophisticated processors and prohibiting American citizens from lending China a hand in developing sensitive industries like semiconductors. On Wednesday, Montana made history by banning the use of the popular short video app TikTok on all smartphones, including personal ones. On Sunday, Beijing retaliated by prohibiting the use of chips made by the American company Micron by operators of critical infrastructure. Citing relatively serious cybersecurity risks. The success of Western attempts to slow China's technological advancement is debatable. According to Time, Kiyu Jin, an associate professor at the London School of Economics and author of the New China Playbook, says that while there may be short term benefits to putting pressure on China's supply chains, 
doing so may prove counterproductive in the long run. Due to Western export controls, China's domestic tech industry has seen a surge in demand and a decrease in international competition, allowing for a thriving innovation ecosystem that spans from national labs to thousands of domestic startups. Jin says, leapfrogging is possible under these conditions. The United States has increased its cooperation with allies and taken steps to impede Chinese technological development. To create the most powerful quantum centric supercomputer in the world, IBM announced on Sunday, on the fringes of the G7, a 10 year, $100 million initiative with the University of Tokyo and the University of Chicago. In addition, China has made significant investments in quantum computers in recent years because of their potentially game changing military and cryptographic applications. However, some experts worry that the push toward tech decoupling could exacerbate economic stresses in developing countries, which in turn could boost support for populist and authoritarian regimes. According to Richard Gowan, UN Director of the International Crisis Group, economic problems are fueling political discontent and democratic backsliding in countries ranging from Pakistan to Tunisia, arguing for increased economic aid from the G7 for struggling nations of the global south. Political unrest as a result of the worldwide economic crisis.